Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I mock it, giving you my thoughts, views, and opinions, and today we look at Chat Sports. Just yesterday, they released a mock draft, you know, before Sunday, when the draft order is going to change all and whatnot, so I'm going to release this to you today on Sunday, give you a little something to watch while you're watching your football but we're going to take a look at Tom Downey's mock draft. We're going to mock it. I went ahead and watched the video. I got his take on it. But what's crack -a It's your boy, Baroshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm currently enjoying Detroit currently with a 10-point lead over the Cardinals. It's wild. It's crazy. I can't believe it. But... Tomorrow, you're going to be getting my big board, my 2022 big board, top 50 prospects. And then on Tuesday, you get a three-round mock. It's going to be a load of fun. So come check that out. Let's go ahead. Let's switch on over. You best believe it. You already know. First pick, Aiden Hutchinson. Also, if you didn't know, broshmoshop.com, everything's 25% off. Use promo code ALLBRO25 in all caps. It gets you that 25% off. But... We, we kind of already know this big big sack by Detroit, by the way, on a blitz. But they can help that pass rush by getting someone like Aiden Hutchinson or maybe or maybe a KT. It's kind of a toss-up between the two, in my opinion. Both are very good prospects. In help Just getting the best player available, I think, is the way to go, especially in a quarterback class. That's sus. Uh, let's see what the Jaguars do at two. They go with Evan Neal. Evan Neal, I think, is... If you include Hutch and KT in this own little tier of their own being the unanimous top picks in this class, I think Evan Neal is right there on the cusp to join in those two. He is so good. He's been so dominant. Just look at what he did to Georgia's defensive line in the SEC championship game. I think the Jags, if they want to help Trevor Lawrence, their, uh, their investment, their franchise quarterback, then yes, this makes a ton of sense. To forego KT, maybe someone you have maybe one or two picks higher on your board to get a little protection. Cam Robinson, he's he's probably not going to be back with Jacksonville next year. Jawan Taylor has been up and down, and you really don't know what you got in Walker Little. So grabbing this makes sense. I've become a bit more because uh, uh, people have talked to me about this in the comments, and I'm like, you know what? This picks makes a lot more sense than KT. But, I mean, I don't doubt KT would be a pick here or a possibility. Both are very good. So, you know the Texans are probably going KT then, which they do. They go KT. They take, hey, this guy, he could be the number one overall pick. We get him at three. Let's just help our franchise. Let's get blue chip players in here. We got Davis Mills. I think he's shown enough to warrant, hey, another season. Worst case scenario, he bombs, and you get Bryce Young. Jets, let's see. D do we change here? Do we go maybe outside? Maybe we don't go with a Derek Stanley or a Kyle Hamilton. Do we go outside of the top 10? No, Derek Stanley. He is going to be a top five prospect until it's we get more information on the ankle. Is this something that can be bad for the long term with him? Um, Yeah, I mean, this helps with the uh, the cornerback core a ton. Derek Stanley is a phenomenal prospect. All right, who do you got next? All right, G Giants back-to-back -back picks, Charles Cross. The offensive line, it's a mess. Cross, I for me, I like Icky a bit better, but I get it, Cross, he's still to be in that top 10 discussion. The line is trash. For the Giants, I don't care. Oh, parts are playing better here and there. Nah, get a be get just get better. Whether it's moving cross to the right side, like we saw with Penisol, or you move Andrew Thomas, who has played right tackle before, to the right side. I think either or works there. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at who the next pick is. My boy Tyler Lindebaum. They, do I, I'm not opposed to them double dipping on the offensive line. I don't think they necessarily have to. They can maybe go with the Kyle Hamilton. I've kind of liked that pick in mocks recently. But Tyler Lindebaum, not a sexy pick. It's not maybe the most valuable pick, being an interior lineman. But he's honestly probably the best interior lineman we've seen since a guy like Quentin Nelson. So. Yeah, I, I have no problem with this whatsoever. Let's see what the Jets do at pick 
well, their second pick. They get the replacement for Marcus May in Kyle Hamilton. There's a lot of ways you can use this cat. He's very versatile in that aspect. Marcus May likely not coming back to the with uh, coming off the franchise tag. Likely not back with the team. So maybe you could re-sign him for cheap because he's been beat up this year. So maybe his value is not nearly as high as it, it would it was just last year. So. Yeah, I'm cool with this. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of just going strictly secondary. They think, well, Joe Douglas, he, he likes he likes going with the trenches. I'm not opposed to that either, but I think this makes a ton of sense. Uh, I don't know where. I can't remember. Oh, he goes with Icky, so he gets the left tackle of the future. Worst case scenario, he ends up being a banger guard. Guess what? Panthers, they need both those. Their offensive line outside of Moton or, is, is a horrendous. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. All right, so what do you do with the Atlanta Falcons? David Ajabo. This dude has elevated his stock so much. Stupid athletic, stupid lengthy. The guy is just a very good, very good. He might he might be a little bit raw, might take a little bit of time to really get accustomed to the NFL or polish off some of those pass rushing moves. Keep in mind, not a lot of significant playing time to this guy's name, but he has been so good this year opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. Pass rush is, I think, by far, by far the weakest position for the Falcons. I totally agree. How about the Eagles? George Karloftis. He is a Eagles type of edge rusher, a guy that you could kick to the inside on passing downs. He He's going to be an He's going to be ranked all over the place, depending on how you view him. It's going to be very interesting, just because he's not your typical bendy, um, lengthy type of edge rusher. He wins with power. He wins with explosiveness off of the uh, with his get off. The guy's pretty good in that aspect. My dog's at the door. He doesn't like that I close the door. I'm sorry, Gojo. You can't be a part of this video. It's not happening today. I need a break. But, nah, I think this is a good pick for the Eagles. Let's see what they go with their next. Andrew Booth, he's the next corner off the board after Steenley. This guy's going to have a big rise. I just know it. He's going to test out well. He ended the year hot. It just makes sense. So, Booth comes. You know what? I'm going to let go, Joe in. Come on. You want to be a part of the video? Go, Joe wants to be a part of the video. Come up here, bud. You want to come up here? Come on. Look, Gojo. He's in the video. Yay. How about... Wh where do you think the Vikings go, bud? Don't you touch the mic. Don't you touch the mic. Uh, DeMarvin Leal, man. So this feels like a Mike Zimmer pick. Outside of, you know, being a corner. Because Mike Zimmer liked them first-round corners. Hopefully it works out one of these times. But Leal's a guy that... Uh, he brings a lot of heftiness on the off the edge. You kick him inside. I mean, he put on, I think, a lot of bad weight this year, which led to some ineffectiveness during some spurts of the year. But you're getting a very special player in terms of uh, when he turns that flab to pure muscle because that's what happens when you try to put on weight in a short period of time. And sometimes it's uh, the transfer doesn't go well. Allow him to do that with a full offseason, full drafts, draft process. I think it'll it'll turn out well. You're going to see this guy has great movement skills for his size. He uses his hands exceptionally well. I'm not opposed to the pick. I think he might be he's a, a bit lower on my board. I'd probably go with the corner, but I, I understand. I get where, the, where he's coming from with this. It's probably the first pick I really dislike. So we got overall odds on uh, first overall pick. Look at that. Quarterbacks get in some love. I mean, it's a valuable position. Where will the quarterbacks go in this mock? But Garrett Wilson, top guy for Tom Downey. I like Garrett Wilson. He's going to be one of my top receivers. Uh, I got another guy that's fastly approaching. We'll probably see him off the board soon. But not a lot of firepower there. New Orleans are probably bringing Jamison back for another year. Let's get him a legit receiver, especially Michael Thomas' future might be in question. I don't know. We'll see. And then here's the other receiver that's probably fastly approaching. This guy's just kind of special in the way he moves. Alabama goes with another speedster after losing their other speedster because he's an idiot. But they get Jameson Williams. 
I'm not opposed to that. This makes a lot of sense. They need more playmakers that aren't Hunter Renfro or Darren Waller in this offense. So I think we see our first quarterback go off the board. Kenny Pickett going to Pittsburgh. The Pitt prospect himself. This is probably just an ideal scenario for Kenny Pickett getting to stay home. Steelers, they need to they need to find that bridge from Big Ben, and I think Kenny Pickett be, might be one of the safer options. I don't know if the upside is that of an elite quarterback, but I definitely think he has the ability to be a top 10, top 12 quarterback in the league. There, that, that offense is surrounded with a lot of playmakers. Yeah, they need improved parts of the line. They could do that maybe in free agency or later on in the draft. Address the most valuable position on any NFL roster being the quarterback. And I think he sticks with quarterback here in Denver with Malik Willis. So he gets bit, a bit more of a project. This is the guy with the most upside of any quarterback in the class. You might roll with Steady Teddy for another year, maybe a half a year when you feel Willis is ready. And then you just unleash him. He can, you, he can really change a lot of aspects of this offense just with his running ability. This guy was in the, I think, the top 10 or top 15 of force missed tackles by any player in college football. That's wild at the quarterback position. He is just a special talent that needs to work on some of the decision-making aspects. Uh-oh, Cardinals are driving. They're driving. They, uh, you don't want to lose to the only one-loss team in football. Let's see. Bengals, they go with Kenny Green. I like this pick. Kenny Green's not getting a lot of love. This guy is a guy that I think could be a wonderful tackle, especially in a Zach Taylor offense. That outside zone blocking scheme uses a lot of motion. I think this guy's got exceptional movement skills, but we know he's a banger guard as well. Guess what? The Bengals, they kind of need both. Let's see where the Browns pick, what they go with here, because they could go a lot of different routes. They go with Chris Olave. They get a receiver that's very polished as a route runner. He's got legit burners. Be a good complement in this offense to that mean rushing attack to be able to... Uh, have that vertical threat down the field, especially incorporating a lot of play action. I mean, that's just what Stefanski likes to do. And this gives Baker, hey, you got one more shot at this franchise quarterback thing, dude. Let's we'll get you we got you a playmaker. OBJ didn't work out. Chris Olave should fit like a glove. Washington football team, I imagine this is quarterback. And it is. Matt Corral, we'll talk about the Bills' decision in a second. But Matt Corral going off the board here, I think makes sense. They need uh, someone. They got a fine backup in Tyler Heineke. But they need that franchise quarterback. Tyler Heineke could be the starter while Matt Corral kind of gets used to going through progressions and just operating an NFL-like offense. So, yeah, I like this pick. Tyre Elam, man. This guy, I think he's going to test out well. He's got, like, those legit shutdown quarterback traits with his length and how he plays speed could be a concern i don't think it's going to be that much of a concern he's going to be faster than guys like uh sauce who's falling down the board coincidentally but yeah no getting a legit number two to white we've seen how bad that defense has been without white so getting a legit number two i think is key or at least getting some competition for guys like dane jackson and levi wallace I like this. It's just, For me, this pick is a lot more sexy than a Jordan Davis, which has kind of been what I've been chalking to the, to the Bills recently. All right, the Eagles' final pick. They go Devin Lloyd. They haven't gone linebacker in the first round in like 40 years. Well, they do it here. There's all, uh, teams, uh, something's changed. There's always a president be like, oh, no. Look, they haven't done this in so long. Good for the Eagles. When you have three first-round picks, yeah, it, it kind of happens. Devin Lloyd, I think, is a perfect fit. This is a guy. This is a team that mainly they run zone for the, with their linebackers about seventy to seventy-five percent of the time. He's he's got a big wing span. He's going to be explosive as a pass rusher or a blitzer. This guy's going to be elite run stuffer. It's a good pick. So they go Booth. They go Karloftis. All defense with their first picks. They address all levels. of of the defense. I like it. What do you do for my Dolphins? Trevor Penning. This is a high upside guy. This is a guy I'm not going to move. I've talked about him just in Friday's video. Uh, go check that out. Talk about some sleepers not from Power 5 schools. But he's a guy I think is going to make a lot of money 
at the Senior Bowl from a standpoint of this guy is a tremendous athlete. Tremendous athlete for his size. He's like 6'7", 320. Tremendous athlete, great length. Just kind of needs to put a few things together in terms of being a pass protector. He is uh, raw in that aspect. And, like, the guy's got quick feet. He just needs to use his feet better. Uh, and just, uh, just in, in general. Oh, now you want to leave Gojo. Talking about my dolphins. And now you want to go. All right, buddy. I'll catch you later. All right, let's see what these Chargers do, man. Uh, Traylon Burks is on the board. Uh, Jordan Davis is on the board. I imagine it's one of those two. Jordan Davis. So, yeah, we know the Chargers, their run game, it kind of sucks. Their run defense, I should say. Um, it could be a lot better. It's not good. It's uh, This is a team that sells out to stop the pass. So getting a guy that you know is going to be an elite run stuffer that has a little bit of pass rush and upside, I think is legit. He's falling down my board just because I really think he's a two-down player, though. And then Detroit with their next pick, Carson Strong. There's going to be concerns with the knees. Well, with the knee, when it comes to Carson Strong, uh, we'll find out more with medical checks of the combine. Is this a short-term, long-term? What are the ramifications for his type of injury? Because it goes a bit deeper, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in my – Big board video, but they get their quarterback of the future. They get a fifth-year option with that, with drafting him in the first round. That's pretty legit. So I, I don't mind it. I understand it. I get it. Uh, no Nakopi Dean yet. Until now, the Ravens. So they have Patrick Queen. For as athletic as he is, man, he's just not processing the field well in coverage. He's kind of a missed tackle machine. Not to say it's the end of the line for him. Obviously, he's only a second-year player. Yeah, second-year player. So still, still a lot can change. But grab it maybe a guy that can play alongside him. That, man, this is guy is going to be great as a man coverage guy for a team that loves running cover one, cover zero. He's going to be great in man coverage, a guy that just blows up, blows up the backfield is great. Now he wants to come back in. Make up your mind, Gojo. Make up your mind. Jeez Louise. This dog, man, he just loves attention. He needs love. Come here, Gojo. Let's see what the Chiefs pick. Because you're a Chiefs fan because you're a bandwagon fan. He is. He really is, though. I'm kind of ashamed. At least he's not a Patriots fan. As a Dolphins fan, at least he's not a Patriots fan. Uh, Trent McDuffie. He's, I don't think, this is actually the first pick that I really disagree with. I don't think he's a good scheme fit. For a team that plays as much press man as they do, I that's not McDuffie's game, dude. He's better in off coverage. He's better at mirroring receivers. He's got good short area quickness to do so. I don't think the lane's going to be there for him. There's questions about the long field speed. And I'm really high on McDuffie. I think in a uh, like a Brandon Staley type of defense, he's going to flourish. But I just don't like this as a scheme fit. What about these Arizona Cardinals? Ahmad Gardner, dude. Great scheme fit, exceptional value here. Y'all have seen, if you see my ranking video, you know he's my cornerback too right now. He's got a big matchup in the first round of the playoffs against Alabama's Jameson Williams. I'm excited to see how that goes. He's not allowed a touchdown throughout his whole career. This is a good get for the Cardinals who need a little more juice at corner, uh, at least for the future, you know? And then Jahad Dotson, I like this pick for the Tennessee Titans. They don't really have a, a, a guy that can separate the guy. Guys like A.J. Brown, who, who, he's a good separator. He could stretch the field. But you mainly want the, him and Julio are guys you want to get the ball in their hands relatively quickly because they make guys miss. They, they're good after the catch. Jahan Dotson is that separator guy that can ki maybe kick into the slot. He, we know he can play outside, but he might be best suited for the slot. So I, I kind of I like this pick for the Titans. And then we see Trayvon Walker going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Guy with tremendous upside. He kind of probably would be the Will Gold William Golston um, fit in this class or in this defense. Uh, I like this. I mean, he's a guy that probably you don't start from day one, but you know that that ceiling is immense. Just grabbing talent, man, if you're the Bucks, You already are pretty deep as a roster. And then we got, what do we got for the Patriots? 
Traylon Burks. Wow. A guy that you could just dump it off to him if you're Mac Jones, if you're Mac and Cheese. And he is so good after the catch, but even better as a vertical threat, as a contested catch guy. This guy's got great hands. Might not have like the best route tree or the most complete route tree, but for the routes he can run, he's going to be a mismatch nightmare for defenses. And then finally, let's see what the Packers do. They go with Drake London. They get their Devontae Adams replacement. I don't think he's coming back because I don't think Aaron Rodgers comes back. Obviously, a lot can change between now and the draft, but I think Drake London is a phenomenal pick. I'm a big fan uh, and big lover of him going to the Packers. I really like that fit. Overall, what do I think of this mock? Uh, I really hated the Trent McDuffie pick. I'm not going to lie. Outside of that, I kind of understand where he's coming from. Like the Leal pick might be the other one that I'm kind of like, eh, about. But for the most part, I thought this was a solid mock draft. You let me know in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Check out the big board tomorrow and then the three round mock draft on Tuesday. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.